so I'm originally from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I was born in New York City in Queens, but I only lived there for the first two years of my life. My family also has a musical background as well, so I think that helped. And um, where I went to school had a really, really great music program, and that's what encouraged me to eventually go to college for music. My first opera experience was in Philadelphia with Opera Philadelphia. It was 2006 or 2007, and they were doing a production of Donizetti's Don Pasquale. My choir teacher got us free tickets to go to a dress rehearsal, and up until that point, I only really wanted to do musical theater. After we saw that opera, I was like, oh my gosh, this is like musical theater, but there's no dialogue. And so for like seventh grade me, I was like, oh, well, I really love singing, but acting's always been a little scary to me, so maybe opera would kind of blend those two worlds where you don't have to worry as much about having dialogue acting as music to help you act. The opera role that I have done thus far that has had the greatest impact on me has probably been Pamina in Die Zauberflöte. She kind of came about at a very like weirdly critical time in my career. She was my first operatic role and I was a junior in undergrad. She helped me really delve into vulnerable dramatic acting in music, not just like comedic acting or very characterized acting. While I was in quarantine, I like reread all the Harry Potter books. <laughs> I read um, the Lord of the Rings trilogy all the way through, finally, <laughs> for the first time. And um, a bunch of other books too, like a bunch of books that got recommended to me over the summer that were nonfiction books. They really shaped a lot of things for me and they helped kind of modify some of the ways that I was looking at the world. So that was really, really great to have as an experience in quarantine. When I'm not singing, my biggest stress relief is actually cooking and baking. Uh, when I was in high school, I actually for a hot second contemplated going to culinary school instead of music. But then I thought to myself, I really like cooking and baking because I like sharing it with other people. If you kind of like make a mistake in cooking or baking, there's a really fun way to improvise and still make it beautiful in some way, even if it's just in how it tastes. And I thought to myself, but music, there's so much more for me to learn. And I really wanted to kind of work really, really hard at it because those were my favorite things to do when I was in high school, my music classes. And they heavily influenced all of my academic courses. Like my music influenced what books I liked to read outside of class because I also love to read and my music really influenced how I looked at history as well, because as history changes, music also changes.
Hi everyone, my name is Amanda Lynn Bottoms and I'm a mezzo-soprano with the Cape Fitz Young Artist Program. I am from Buffalo, New York, uh, specifically Chictawaga, New York, and I got into opera, um, well specifically music, because I was kind of a bookworm and I loved to be on my own, but as I got into middle school I wanted to have some friends, so I auditioned for the talent show and I didn't tell my family and I decided to sing When You Believe from the Prince of Egypt. And it's a duet. So I boldly sang both parts, didn't tell my family what I was doing, but I just gave them the tickets. And just seeing how much they loved and supported what I was doing really launched me into thinking that I had a place in music and specifically opera. I fell into it in college. I had a wonderful teacher, Lori Tremuda, who gave me the Abanera from Carmen and it just kind of rolled into destiny from there. Of the roles I've done, uh, Carmen would probably be the most meaningful because even though we have very, very differing personalities and goals in life, her sureness of who she is and the freedom she seeks gives me bravery when I perform the role, and I just admire how confident she is in herself, and I want to emulate that in my own life. My dream role, I don't think I can find in the canon yet. I think my dream role it has yet to be written, which is a really awesome feeling to know that there are great composers out there who, especially in the time we're in, are going to write fruitful and very impactful works. And I, I look forward to singing something that really relates to my life, especially what we're going through now. So it hasn't been written yet, but I know it'll come soon.
I love to sing contemporary music because one, knowing the composer, a lot of times we get the experience of working with a living composer and there's something so humbling and, and creatively stimulating to be able to speak to the person who made this work to have input about how it's created is such an empowering thing for singers to not just be given black and white notes on a page but to have a say in how it's created but also there are just such dynamic stories being told through contemporary works. One of my favorite is Dr. Atomic. I love to work on the role of Kitty because what she's going through is so particular to the experience of the technological boom that came in the 1900s. So it's exciting, it's really exciting. <laughs> when I am not singing, I love to scour Netflix and I am very much into photography and uh, web development. But also, I love nature, so um, I hike a lot. I'm unfortunately separated from my dog right now, but when I have my time off in non-COVID times, I am spending every moment cuddling with my dog. But right now, I am blessedly uh, have access to technology and I'm taking advantage of it. I definitely have a guilty pleasure for Korean pop. I am obsessed with Stray Kids, I really, really love Girls' Generation and Mama Moo. I want to get better at my Korean and just so I can go to Korea one day and really, really experience the culture there. And I think music has been an unexpected, beautiful avenue into that. So I, I love K-pop. <laughs> I hope you enjoy today's presentation of all of the singers. Unfortunately, I am under the weather and can't participate, but I know that you will love everything that takes place today. Hello, my name is Sam Weiser. I'm a bass baritone and I'm in my third year in the K. Fritz Young Artist Program at Washington National Opera. I initially wanted to be uh, a music teacher, um, possibly chorus, possibly band. I was a big band kid in high school, so I decided to pursue music education as a vocation in college. When I was in college, of course, you had to take private studio lessons, so my chosen instrument was voice. By the time I was end of my sophomore year, I think I was doing a production, a community production of Carlisle Floyd's Susanna. Did that production and I was super thrilled with how that went and decided to pursue graduate school and from then uh, went to my first young artist program and wound up here and haven't looked back ever since. The most meaningful role I've done on stage thus far is the commendatory from Don Giovanni. He gets killed in the beginning and comes back in the end with the most badass scene in the entire opera. I think my dream role or roles uh, would be either Boris and Boris Gudinov, um, way down the line, <laughs> or Olin Blitch from Carlisle Floyd Susanna. Coincidentally, the first opera I saw was Don Giovanni uh, at the Pittsburgh Opera. That was a spectacular show. I took myself to the opera. I had just turned 21, so I was looking forward to dressing in a suit and grabbing myself a scotch and watching uh, an opera. My guilty music pleasure, I think, would be uh, emo music from perhaps the early 2000s. When I'm not singing, my favorite things to do, I am a big gamer and I like to play a genre uh, called MMORPG which stands for Massively Multiplayer Online Role-Playing Game. And it just allows me to escape to another world uh, when I'm on my downtime and get to recharge my batteries that way. Okay, poor, some pitié, 